Hi everyone. All right, I'm live now. This is Carlos Carlos. Uh, welcome to my Carlos journey. I'm on my way to Cape May, but along the way, um, I've been stopping at environmentally sensitive areas. So where I am now, you might be able to hear something that looks different than the scenes. I'm in Chesterfield, where it's a bucolic scene right behind me, but if you look this way, it's not very much at all. There is ongoing construction at the Chesterfield compressor station, which is where I am. I'm right across the street. And for those of you who know about this pipeline, um, I'll just give more details in a moment about my own journey and we'll probably make a video later on. But for those of you who know um, about the Southern Reliability Link pipeline, which is avail as uh, proposed and hasn't been passed yet but regardless the people here I'm not sure what this trucks about um, are actually going ahead with construction they've been doing construction for a little while now so they're presuming that the pipelines already done deal almost as if they've been let known ahead of time that there is uh, there's a go-ahead but it actually hasn't formally been approved so somehow they've been given the wink and they're going ahead of the actual formal process so they own this land and they can do what they want with it but there's no other reason for them to build a compressor station unless this pipeline becomes um passed so that being said i'm here now i've been walking since uh may and i took a long break because i was injured but i'm walking for many reasons uh one of which which i added was um, for pipelines uh, to expose the pipelines that are all descending upon New Jersey these past few, uh, I guess, couple of years. I sort of only got into the loop since the p learning about the Pilgrim Pipeline in North Jersey, but they're all coming all at once, and there's a lot of pressure to get them, um, get them pushed through on in terms of industry and government polluting, and it's not in the citizens' interest. It's not in the future's interest, and my whole walk is about sustainability and making the planet a place for, um, sorry, I'm seeing text now, so I'm getting sidetracked. Um, I'll read that in a minute. Well, actually, let me read it now. Have you heard about the Kathleen Bench? She's a standing rock order. No, I have not, but I will look into that, Brad. Thank you for commenting that. Um, so, um, there's these pipelines that are all descending upon New Jersey right now and many other places in the country. You know, uh, the Dakota Access Pipeline was is one of many and it's one of the most sensitive and thankfully so many people rallied to it and now there's people all across the country trying to fight these pipelines. They're not built. Um, thanks. I, um, I'm doing my best to, uh, to just highlight them with this walk. Uh, my walk will be I think over 300 miles by the time I'm done. Um, I have to calculate it again. I've gone off track a bit. But um, yeah, so this is just one of many battles. And the thing is, we have to work together. We have to support each other. I've been supported very well. I've been able to sleep at other people's houses. They've been putting me up. I haven't had to set up my tent. I do have a backpack on. But I'm going to walk around a little bit because I think that'll help me. I'm not much to stand still. Um, so I want to show where we are. There is a space in between two ongoing construction sites close to where the police officer with his lights are on. And let's see if this works. No, it works. Great. All right. I flipped the video. It's the first time I did that. So um, we're walking towards a site and there's a sign there where you will get a feel for the resistance um, against this pipeline, but it's not exactly um, going their way right now because there's construction ongoing and there's a boat coming up later this month, the Pinelands Commission, which is charged with keeping the Pinelands safe. Uh, that's the whole reason for their existence. Um, is, going to vote whether or not to allow this pipeline to go through the Pinelands. And if they do allow it to go through, I see that as a very con very much a contradiction of their existence. It's sort of like suicide if you allow the Pinelands Commission 
the Pinelands Commission allows this pipeline to go through, they're essentially saying the Pinelands don't matter, but their whole point of existing is to protect it. So this is called ground zero for the pipeline because it's where it begins, but it's also the most volatile point. Um, I have not walked here, so here's a sign put up that uh, we got to fix it for later. But um, yeah, there's construction going on now, and when you when this is built, the houses around here are going to be threatened. Everybody in this, I, I don't know what the radius is, but this is a huge amount of gas coming through this area being compressed to be even more volatile, more dangerous as it makes its way toward the Jersey coast. And everybody along the roadway that the pipeline goes is under threat and especially closest compressor station because there's just so much exchange going on. So, all right, I, um, I think I could sneak by here. The police officer was actually very accommodating before yeah all right so he said just not to go past that area back there because then it stops being public land and it becomes a private land so just to give you a feel for what's going on now wow i didn't realize that i'd get such a good view i would have started the video over here So there's, I'm sure there's lots of subcontractors here, a lot of people just chasing money. Um, one thing I want to say, which I was feeling very brave last night when I got into the area, a security guard came out to me and said, um, took my picture and asked what I was doing. And I told him and I asked what he was doing working for a company that is guarding such a, a disastrous idea a disastrous concept as these pipelines and I said would you consider transferring going and asking to transfer and I think that's really kind of the way that this might be fought if it is passed is we have to go directly to the workers directly to the people who are actually building this and say ask for a transfer or consider leaving your job you know we all do need money but the thing is, um, we also need a planet to be able to survive on, and those two things went in contradiction. I think the higher road is, um, and I've quit my job to kind of be an activist for a little while. So there are lots of people that would help out these people and, and be able to figure out other work. I think we could all do this. We just have to be creative. All right, so you can see the workers here. And there's cranes, all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> all right, so um, it's, I think, a little bit after four now. I'm glad I did this video now because by six, when some other pipeline fighters are going to come join me and the press might come too to do some interviews, these workers might be home, uh, have gone home. There might not be activity. So I wanted you to see that this is ongoing. This is a massive project. Um, it's the pipeline again is not even approved yet they're building it assuming that it will be approved this is just the hubris of corporations these days assuming that they already have politicians in their pockets so um, yeah I want you to witness it and see this thing before it's built and so we have some before and afters and look at the land around here everything that you see is in grave danger if this thing gets built existential danger for no real good reason it's not benefiting the local population it's not going to be uh, providing gas to local residents it's really just to be exported that's the real story this is all about the United States becoming a commercial colony perhaps and being uh, our resources being extracted we're we're not necessarily any better than anywhere else in the world where resources have been extracted we still have resources and people are going for them uh, but the very ironic, most ironic part of it is that fracking is not at all uh, cost beneficial. So, oh, all right. So all right, I'm going to start responding to what people say. I get distracted easily. I'm in Chesterfield, New Jersey, and there's a compressor station where at the start of the, what would be the start of the Southern Reliability Link Pipeline. Uh, thanks, Citizens Media. I'm guessing Jeff's on there. Thank you, Jeff. 
All right, so, um, sorry about my shaky hands. I'll look into that. All right, so I will, um, I'm gonna stop the video by the sign again. And we will try and put a video up later um, when there's more of us here and kind of get a feel for uh, some of the people that are resisting this. And they're a lot more knowledgeable than me. I'm kind of learning things about specific pipelines as I go. I was at Penn East a few days ago protesting that or learning about the protests against it and walking some of it. Um, so this is uh, a picture, I guess, of a compressor station blowing up. You could see, or something blowing up, that it looks like a major highway is right next to it, so you get a size for how big it is. All right, uh, here, let me see if I can flip it back around. Oh, I'm blocking it. All right, there, there I am. All right, so thank you. It's my first video for Citizens Media TV, and um, I will, uh, I'll try and record later, since I'm now linked in and I can do that. So, yeah, thanks for watching. All right, bye.